I feel like it, you lack team fight, you lack setup. Like, yeah, maybe you can get your Rubik later on. He picks up a blink dagger or a four star or an aether lens, and he can start setting up for your team. I just find it rough to set up with a draft like this. And when you can't take off with it, it just tends to fall apart. I, I want to yeah. see what happens. They're going to run into Frisky for a moment. Smoke will be broken. Frisky's going to be just fine to back his way out. But like I was saying, John, I have a lot of concerns regarding this draft. A at least for LRNR. Like, I, I feel like Peaky Killer just... I mean, you already said it, but they have a much easier time just kind of executing this style of draft. Yeah. I think the one thing for LRNR is their early push can be strong. You tie in for an early metamorphosis play and maybe prioritizing mid with the Jakiro. You can take the mid tier one fast and focus on maybe the top tier one as well and open up the map more to try to take over. There's also one weird wild card factor right now for the side of LRNR in that I believe these stones are standing in. We don't have why, 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 why here. So right. these stones coming out, I haven't seen him in a while. He's, uh, I believe he's still on YBB. How much this affects or improves their gameplay is a question. A bit of an unfortunate start here for the Inch. Outside, forced to, to go for the level 1 nature's attendance to be able to survive the, the onslaught that was coming. So, a bit of a weaker start for the Enchantress level 1, but uh, not, not the worst start nonetheless. Like, you can still go Impetus level 2 and then build into Enchant after that. We're going to start with the mid lane, though. You're going to have these stones against XM. This should, in theory, be a challenging lane for the Ember, because I don't think the Ember Spirit really enjoys the Necrophose matchup, though XM is trying to get as aggressive as humanly possible early on, which is basically what you need to do with the Flame Guard. But eventually, I do believe the Necrophose just starts to take over. Yeah, it is a dominant lane for Necro. I like this little uh, lane they've got going. Right, it, it's very solid for the Necro to have. Uh, YYY is on hand. It's real one who's missing right now for LRNR. So you have the strong foundation to slow down XM. I think this lane is pretty much just dead for Ember. This forces you to go for almost like a max flame guard build, which you really don't enjoy because Slight of Fist is your early aggression now. Like it is better in farm, but it's just super passive and Ember just enjoys going really active with phase boots or corrosion. So I'm curious to see how much XM's impact will actually be like in the early game, because um, these stones is just shoving them out real hard. Yeah. Let's have a look at the side lanes as well. Like top lane, outside, and fly fly. Going to be up against Wen Hao and, of course, why, 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 why. And you're seeing fly fly getting very aggressive early on. Wen Hao, he's going to cop a pounce here from the, uh, from the Slark. No kill to come out from fly fly, but this is kind of what you expect to happen. Like you've got an Enchantress plus five. He's still level one. Once you've got the level one enchant up, like that bonus slow, that would have made the difference that uh, that kill attempt. And so, if you're why 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 or win how, this is not going to be an easy lane for you. No, it's really not. I think you have to watch yourself. You're all out of mana now as well. And why 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 why? One big issue with that Dawnbreaker is mana sustain. Solar Ring has to kick in sooner rather than later for you to really have a play in that lane. And you don't really have much counterplay. I think you can maybe look for the lift back save by the time you hit two. Overall, Fly Fly should just be free to farm. And it's a little bit of a different story in comparison to, like, say, the bot lane coming out from Piggy Killer, where Ava has gone Axis 1, and then level 2, he's gone for the boar, for the call. And this is, again, not a lane that feels amazing for Terrorblade. Every time you have Metamorphosis, it feels good. Like, the Chikiro is kind of a foil to Beastmaster, so you probably don't want to max out the Boris, but you still get value from Axis. Your one issue here for Ava is maybe his mana sustain. He doesn't have anything like the Casual Sage Mask or a Ring of Basilius, so spamming out the spells won't be as sustainable coming out here for the Beastmaster, but the threat is still high, and you still have three Mangos on hand for Ava, so... You can certainly look for some opportunities. Like, if you can flank here with Frisk, get a good Avalanche toss, then chances are you could probably actually kill off Big Ken or Bocce in the land. Yeah, I mean, for now, like, he's going to max the, max the Axis because naturally they're going to try and make stacks of the uh, the Ancients like every Beastmaster does in the current meta. Thing is, they did place a Sentry Ward in the Dire Triangle, so he couldn't go for any stacks because the Ancient camp is currently blocked. So... 
Ava did send a boar over there to try and stack it for himself, but sadly realized that there's no creeps because it is blocked. So we'll see when Frisk is able to get over there and uh, and just kind of de-ward the camp, which he has already got a sentry ward on the courier to get that done. So it looks like he'll go sort that out now. A nice attempt, at least, from LRNR to, to try and slow down the ancient stacks from happening. Because you know that Ava is going to go to the triangle at some point and just farm up the stacks with the axes. But at the very least for now, again, d Ward's going to come out. He's going to get the stacks anyway. I just wonder whether LRNR can try to contest those stacks. With the draft they have, if... I, I find it kind of doubtful. But I would like to see them attempt it. They can. My one issue with contesting stacks really is it leads to lots of map control. Like, I, I think you have a lot of better things to do to can then contest stacks. Like, taking objectives is a big part of LRNR's lineup that you shouldn't underestimate. You now you've got Jakiro plus uh -oh. TV. Bocci. Toss up the Jakiro. He's okay. In fact, it's Frisk that's going to be the issue now because Big Can's just going to chase him down. And the Tiny's gone. Very nice pick up there for the side of TB, or rather for the side of LRNR is... Well, Bocci looked like the one to drop, but Ava, he was lacking some mana. And it didn't really seem like he was too interested in trying to force the fight. So he just lets the Tiny die. Yeah, just a little bit of aggressive posturing out from Frisk. Does get punished for it quite severely. Yeah, I have to respect the Jakira's magic damage and the physical output of a Terrorblade. You are a Tiny, you've got zero base armor. When he has Metamorphosis up, you really do just melt. Does give the opportunity to top up XM's bottle with the TPN. And he will find himself a Water Rune, so you're giving a little bit of a relief to your mid, which is necessary when you are up against Necrophos. Like, this is such a dominant lane for D-Stones. Though, Frisk. Oh, then Toss misses. He tries. I, I don't think it would have been a kill anyway. To be fair, he doesn't have Ghost Shroud up, but I, I just don't see him dying. Like, he's already got the, the uh, casual cloak up, 10 stick charges on the Necrophos, like, even a Fairy Fire there. He, he definitely was not going down. Top lane. Why is currently being chased here by outside? Fly, fly. Gonna be able to close the gap with the Pounce now that the enchant was committed. Dark Pact is there as well. Why? Still trying to run. Does have the Sol Ring available, but ooh, won't ooh, even ooh, end, up, ooh. end up popping it. The seed shot, very, very annoying to play against. And now Fly Fly, just going to die for another. See if he can get it. Get the Tower Diagra going. When Hal still trying to juke him out as best as humanly possible. But it's not going to be enough. Fly Fly finding a double kill for himself on the Slark. And that's going to be already two perma Agis. They might even go for another. Why is going to show up. Why will try to force the fight. Fly Ooh. Fly actually got stunned. Oh. He's okay though. Fly Fly able to back off and... I believe he was slow due to the seed shot being thrown out again, so he couldn't actually get the kill. Yeah. Did just get... I, I actually think it was the enchant onto him. So okay. five seconds slow was pretty massive. And Fly Fly gets to go back to farming. Would have been a big kill to find on LRNR, but they're not able to get that punish going for themselves. So already you're finding some openings for Piggy Killer. For the side of LRNR, like they've got the level six up on D-Stones. But they don't have rune control. XM finds a power rune for himself. If he had the haste on Necro, a rotation to top with a sight, easy kill onto Fly Fly. You know, one Reaper sight charge already in hand, that would have felt good, but now you're being rotated on. Oh, oh the toss. toss though. Second time that it just hasn't connected here for Frisk. Pretty hard toss to land. These stones is doing a very good job of staying near the creep wave every single time these come out. So it's not easy to land those tosses, but. It is constantly just costing them a bit of time here on the support to try and get those kills in the mid lane. So instead, it seems like Piggy Killer, they're going to rotate bot, try to slow down the push that was coming in from Big Can, and maybe try to set up a, a push themselves. Mind you, it is going to be a three on three scenario now. Bot lane is top lane, Fly Fly, currently being chased down, is going to be able to survive, but the Creep Wave is still chasing him down. And why? He actually had the Soul Ring available to, to have the mana for the Celestial Hammer, but wasn't feeling confident, so we'll leave him be. Yeah. They have to bring in outside now just to get a little bit of healing going for Fly Fly. They have to respect the output of a Dawnbreaker at 5. There is a lot of damage. You're trying down bot here, though. Toss back. Well, they got the toss back this time. Chains around on Bocci. 
He should eventually just fall here. The axe is just flying from Ava. And that'll, uh, that'll get the old job done. So one to three now. Very slight net worth lead the way of Picky Killer. So there is a bit of a group up top lane, but Flyfly now does have the level six mark, so he, he can always just turn around. And in fact, they're going to try now. Outsiders, or rather outside, will show up. Not going to be enough to really ch chase down the Rubik as there was wider kind of just gatekeep there for a moment. Even Bocci showing up with the TP on the Jack. These stones in the meantime, trying to fight XM over a power rune, does end up denying off the invis runes. Just wanting to make sure the Ember doesn't get any more. Because he's basically found every rune, apart from that last one that was denied off. And there's going to be a big rotation. Three heroes mid lane. They've got that Reaper Scythe. They just need a bit more damage onto XM. But he's going to go for the reset. So it seems to be that he's quite aware that something is a little bit awry here in the mid lane. In the meantime, Frisk actually just took his creep wave anyway. He's dragging it over to XM, so they knew exactly where they were. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're ensuring XM just has this farm. Like, the one thing with the Ember in this game, when you max out Flame Guard, again, it's it's not the most aggressive, but it's super good in farming. So he's just going to clear out a little bit of a double stack in the jungle while he can. The farm can ramp up quite fast. His Maelstrom timing is still set to line up pretty good here on the side of Piggy Killer. So you are finding some good openings for LR and R. It just doesn't feel like you've managed to get enough from Necrophos. Yes, you did crush the lane quite nicely, but XM was still finding farm regardless. You didn't really win out the lane. You had a slight advantage throughout. And you don't have anyone that you can rotate with into the Reaper's site. Like that is something that you really need to start racking up early on because it's such a massive cooldown. Like it's always 110 seconds. So you have like very limited uses of this spell throughout the game. And you kind of want to build up those stacks. Like, it's not the most meaningful thing at level 1, but extra HP regen, extra mana regen when you pop on your Ghost Shroud, it f it does a lot for you in that window where when you're trying to bail out, it can make you feel a lot tankier. And again, you kind of want to just gank around with it. Necrophorce is a weird sort of tempo hero that does need early pickoffs on top of just dominating the lane. We're not quite seeing that from V-Stones yet. Not to say he's not effective, but this passive game, I've seen it hurt Necrophosis before, even when they have an early lead. Yeah, it seems like he might want the uh, the Guardian Greaves before he really gets going, but it certainly does feel a little bit slower than necessary as they are going to make the move down bottom. Raw committed Bocci, though, is still going. Big Cat's going to show up, they'll pop the Solar Guardian and... Ah, uh, what? I mean... All right, XM gets caught in the Solar Guardian. d is able to secure a kill, and suddenly, LR and R, they're going to push down the bottom T1 tower. Now, that's a, that's a little bit strange. Uh, his rem was clearly inside. Maybe he was trying to go for a play, dodging with Slide of Fist, but doesn't really have the high level to have it on lower cooldown. And he did have remnants to toss if he wanted to really poke and prod with some damage and back out. Still good punishment coming out from LR and R. Managed to get that Reaper side I was talking about for D-Stones. So it's starting to feel a little bit better. And again, that push is up for LNR. Whenever you have Metamorphosis, it feels great. You try to rotate, but you don't have the jump. It's just a little bit awkward to go up from the low ground. So they avoid a confrontation on LR and R. Uh, Piggy Killer, I mean, you are still meeting some great timings for Flyfly. Fly. He is actually in the mid area if they wanted to try and make a play. He's ready for a bit of a jump in. Now we've got plenty of heroes this time around. Ice Part, though, going to lock a couple of them down. D Stone's popping the Ghost Shroud, just not going to be enough. Frisk does go down in the meantime, but Fly Fly does end up finding a secondary. And he should be just fine to survive through all this as he does go for the TP up. Nice rotations here by Piggy Killers. They do secure a two for one. And they can start forcing in this mid tier one tower with the Siege Creep they do have up. So. Very, very good timing here for the dire end. Yeah, you're pretty happy uh, finding that counter kill onto Necrophos and a nice pick off on Jakira. Like these kills are all going to Fly Fly as well. He's four out of the five kills. So he's got four stacks of Aji up already. That's that's a good start for the Slark. And look at the movement from LR and R. They're just forced to hold mid. They're clumped up so tightly. The only hero getting real space out is Big Can. You've always got Y on standby with that Solar Guardian ready to go. But he's not going to be joining in early on. 
They just want to protect that mid as much as possible. Yeah. Mid lane. They're still trying to protect this ward here. Pinky Killer really don't want to allow this Observer ward to go down. Thing is, LRNR, they know exactly where it is. They wanted the water so bad. But it's just constantly being monitored here by outside and frisk. They're just not allowing it. Meanwhile, XM just causing all kinds of havoc in the mid lane. We'll remnant away. But there's three heroes just consistently being stuck in the mid here for Lonely Rock and Roll, and that is not going to be a good feeling whatsoever. It, it does kind of go back to the support duo, right? Like, this support duo isn't the best kind of roaming and making things happen. So they are kind of relegated to staying with their Necrophos and trying to make plays with him. Otherwise, you'd want to try and make plays with Y on the Dawnbreaker, but he seems to be going the classic Deso build-up. So he also wants to play a slow game. Which, again, yeah. may or may not favor Lonely Rock and Roll. I'm not the biggest fan of the offlane Deaths or Dawnbreaker in most games. I think you have a better time with, say, just being this front line, acting as either an aura carrier, as we see, I think, Blacklist do in Southeast Asia, or more of a fighting hero, you know, with stuff like, say, your shard, your BKB, maybe a blink timing. Just act like uh, initiator for your team, because you do lack like that great initiation outside of counter fights with Solar Guardian. So we'll see if the Deso pays off. The timing should still be pretty good for Y overall. But that does mean you're sustaining farm on what feels like three cores outside of D-Stone. And even D-Stone, again, also is just waiting for oh, fly. his full item and stuff. Caught out. Ice path top lane. The Starbreaker, not quite enough, but Fly Fly is still going to go. They brought enough bodies this time around, and Wenhao does a, a fantastic job of catching him in the lift. So that tier one top tower is going to drop here for the side of Piggy Killer. LR and R going to be very happy with that. And Piggy yep. Killer, like considering their draft, they really have not been able to find as many objectives as they would hope. I think is that mid tier one tower is still standing. Mind you, Ava has not been too involved. He is still just trying to farm towards the helm of the Overlord. But it is certainly allowing Lonely Rock and Roll to have a a much better game than anticipated, at least so far. Like this early game is feeling solid from them. They're still within the striking mark of gold. It's not a massive lead for the side of Piggy Killers. And the next objective they really need to take is that... Well, they take the mid, actually. I, I didn't even notice a while ago. They, have, they just need to maybe plant some forward wards now for vision coming out. Like, just contest some of the farm. Big Can is facing up against Flyfly Fly by himself. That he is. Flyfly, Fly, actually the one that needs to back off because there are heroes rotating to, to help out Big Can. Constant kind of net worth battle between Big Can and, of course, Fly Flyers. Both of them are literally 50 gold difference between each other at the moment. It's a matter of who you end up favoring a little bit later on, but well, at least for now, you should be hitting a timing rather soon for Fly Fly, I think, where he does pick up the Shadow Blade and that does allow him to just start start going. Why again going to find him during the Dawnbreaker, but does just let him go, realizes he can't really do much about the Slark at the moment. And that is another interesting point to make. Like, Flyfly has not bothered trying for the Ags build-up. He'd rather the Shadow Blade, which I suppose is fair if you want to be super aggressive a little bit earlier. Mm. I think it still works. I feel like overall the Ags build-up is a lot better. Just because Echo Saber, Disassembly, then go for your Ags along with a Mage Slayer, it feels pretty good. Especially Ava. against this lineup. We're all committed. Ooh. We're all stolen by Wen Hao. In fact, no, he got the balls. They will still Reaper Scythe and take him out, though. A nice pick up here by the side of LRNR. Wen Hao, I mean, like I said, he got the Call of the Wild Ball, which isn't actually the worst thing to steal. They will look to just play the slow game again. Like, this is a very even matchup considering the standings between these two teams. Not something you would quite expect, but so far, so, lo so good for Lonely Rock and Roll. Yeah, they're, they're, they're doing a jo good job of controlling. I think my one concern with scaling towards the late game is you do have presence with all of your heroes, but Slark is a hero that just enjoys whacking onto your big chorus as the game goes on. Like, once the levels are up for Fly Fly, once the items are up, eventually when he does have Ags, this hero can feel really hard to pin down. Outside? Yeah, probably just dead here. Try and buy as much time as he possibly can, but they'll just lock him down. Bocchi, the, the one to take the kill here on the Jakira. 
At least in terms of kills, LR and R still doing a, a damn good job. Net worth still less than 1k in the advantage of Piggy Killer. So a very, very close game. And you know, I think they really have to start abusing the timings once they do have them up. Like you're going to have very similar timings between the Helm of the Overlord and the Shadow Blade of the Slark. So I think once you have those timings, you just want to go as they do find Big Can, but he just sunders. And Fly Fly is forced to just run his way up. Yeah, just have to respect that LRNR would drag bodies in to protect Big Can. Does go back to just form his triangle. Already has the full Manta up along with his Falcon Blade. So there's some stats to play with here on the Terra Blade. You're just not gonna, you're not just gonna completely melt to the output coming through here from the side of Piggy Killer. For Piggy Killer's part, I mean, you've got the Blink on Frisk. This is when Piggy Killer should be able to make more happen on the map. But again, considering their playstyle right now, they probably don't feel like they need to. They just want to keep the scaling. They want to get bigger and fly fly. He had a pretty good laning phase, just kind of slowing down here in a mid game. Oh, bottom lane, Frisk. Oh, another toss fail. They have Roar up as well, that's the thing. Like, they could just initiate with the Roar instead, but they wanted the toss back. They wanted to try and maybe get him a little bit further from that tier 2 tower as mid lane. Solar Guardian committed, trying to save Wen Hao. The stun will land in time, so why? At least going to try and trade for their trouble. He's going to find outside, but the Glimmer Cape is going to buy a little bit too much time. So now XM can join in. Flyfly Fly in the meantime, he's been chased on the side. Reaper Scythe will connect and Flyfly Fly is gone. Bocchi will secure the kill once again here in the Jakiro. As the rest of Piggy Killer do show up. Another great Ice Path though from oh, Bocchi. Going to lock two of them down. Outside is going to drop here to the Celestial Hammer. And it seems like LR and R, well, they'd love a bit more right now, but they won't be able to get it. Still huge kills to go the way of the Radiant side and Piggy Killer. I mean, these fights just look very awkward. As Big Cam, in the meantime, just takes the top tier two tower. Yeah. So much space to be given out here for LR and R, and Big Can's Big Can is used, utilizing that well. XM Piggy Killer. I mean, surely he's got a remnant to escape to. He's going to be a little bit cautious here because Wenhao is sticking around, but they don't believe they can actually get the kill, and he's just going to TP up. He's fine. Yeah, plays a little bit on the edge, but does manage to bail out in the end. And LR and R, they, they've played around their early timings really well here. I think for Piggy Killer, it's just a little bit disconnected. They're the ones that look a little bit lost right now. Like these avalanches, these tosses from Frisk just not connecting in the right targets. <laughs> Having XM just go full defensive right now, like Maelstrom into BKB, it does make sense. At the same time, you're really, you really don't have damage output right now on the side of Piggy Killer. Like you don't even have value points in the impetus right now from outside, so he can't trade blows to the middle. He's just kind of walking cannon fodder right now with some heal and a slow on hand. It it's um it feels like Piggy Killer can't fully commit into these fights unless Fly Fly somehow works the angles. He's working onto the Ags next now. This is where the Sark really starts to feel a lot more mobile. You know, maybe hunt down to those supports. You've got to take out Wenhao and you've got to take out Bocchi. The damage output of Bocchi is still pretty damn high. And if these stones sights you on top of that macro pyre, you're more than likely just dead. No matter how much HP you have, they're going to have the burst damage to drag you down to that threshold and just get a free Reaper Sight Charge up once more. It is a, a nice kind of lockdown here. And the damage that Jakira can kind of pump out is, is quite ridiculous. If allowed to, that is. And... Well, certainly, Bocci has done a, a fantastic job this game of, of being able to do so, as we are going to have the go-ahead here between these two teams. 8-6 to six so far, 1k advantage now the way of Lonely Rock and Roll. Still feeling very, very confident, allowing so much space yes. here for Big Can on the TB. Is Roshan's going to get forced by Biggie Killer. I don't know about yeah. this. The, the, it's risky. This is risky. Metamorphosis is down, but I think that's the least of your oh. worries. Tosses back though, Bocci is gone. 
Solar Guardian has been committed already. Why? Trying to make his way in. There's going to be a star break into a Reaper's sight, so they have got Frisk down as well. Flyfly, though, seeing that, wants to go for the fight. They'll take down Wenhao. They want the Necropos rule bad, but instead they'll go after Wyme, the Dawnbreaker. Wyme will drop. D-Stone, in the meantime, is going to get roared up by Ava. And so the team fight does go the way of Piggy Killer. The risk does pay off. And Roshan should just be theirs. It just goes back to the point you made earlier there, Mike. Like, you jump the supports, and the fight disappears from the side of Lonely Rock and Roll. Like Bocce dropping there early, dropping the Macropire in an unideal circumstance, the site having to be used on the Tiny. It's it's not ideal. Like you want to lock in the Slark, you want to lock in the Ember more, but at Reaper's site, and they finally had Aegis. It puts Piggy Killer back in a pretty equal position once more. In this game, granted, there was never a massive lead for either side, but it does help set that momentum up for the side of Figgy Killer. Like the Ags now off the back of that fight is pretty much only one part away with the disassembly here for Fly Fly. So the double pounce is going to be up. It's going to feel harder and harder to play this game. Frisk. Lane. They're going to find Wen Hao. Why is going to try and move in? Nice little Glimmer Cape going to save Frisk for now, though they will drop the Macro Pyre with the dust, but Frisk is going to be just fine through it. More than tanky enough. They will just back their way out. So it seems like Figgy Killer have hit those timings that they, that they needed to try and make these kind of plays happen. Looking to slowly become more aggressive on this map. And they'll move down to the bottom tier 2 tower. I mean, they have the helm of the Overlord, so why not get it started? Even the bonus Enchanted Creep as well. The the push can be quite ridiculous. Oh, they even got a Dragon Scale on, a, on Ava, just in case they needed a little bit more. It will get defended though for now. But it does seem like Frisk is waiting for the moment where he can make a jump in for a toss back. Middle tower is under attack. Not gonna go for it yet. Meanwhile, D Stones has picked up a Radiance, so it doesn't bother finishing off the Guardian Greaves. Goes for the full Radiance build up. We'll see yeah. if that makes the difference that they're looking for. It's a good timing for the Necrophos. The mischance makes it really annoying for the Slark to play into as well. Oh, and Necrophos right. is a hero that survives long as well. Poss, oh. or rather, pounces there from Fly Fly. And Y should really have no chance of getting out, though. A nice ice path is going to force outside to take the kill. But they do at least secure the Reaper Scythe, not oh, quite enough. Oh, no. The Glimmer Cape, of course, is going to make it very hard to actually burst the Slark down with that Reaper Scythe. And now Fly Fly wants to reinitiate. He's got 10 stacks of the edge up already. He just wants to keep getting more. Ice Path is down, but Wen Hao is getting shredded here by Fly Fly. Bocce will now be the next target. They'll try to heal him up, but Bocce is just constantly being chased down here. But Fly Fly, he's going a little bit too deep. He's going to lose the Aegis, but I suppose he can just keep going. There's no real reason to slow down. d is now caught out by the roar. Wen Hao is down here to the Ember. Solar Guardian does come in, but it makes no difference. As Y now needs his own way out. And he should be just fine, as they've actually left him behind. They'll just leave him alone and won't try for the kill. But they forced the buyback. They've got three deaths here for the side of LRNR. &R. You'd be more than happy about that if you're Piggy Killer. Yeah. You're finding your openings. You're forcing some pretty awkward fights out from the side of LRNR. &R. Having to buy back on Y is heavy financial commitment. Like that stalls out your BKB a fair bit. That stalls out your blink. They still lack like solid initiation coming out from LRNR. You are still getting this really good farm up on Big Can, but this TB versus Lark matchup, it's very timing focused, right? If you have Metamorphosis up on TB, you win flat out no matter what. But if the Slark catches you all that spells on cooldown, that's when the fight kind of feels nightmarish for Big Can to play. Oh, outside? Four Staff is there just in the nick of time. He's actually surviving through this. Eventually, he will go down. I was gonna say, it'd be a bit ridiculous if he just casually walked away from four heroes, and he will not. Only thanks to the Starbreaker of Y are they, are they even able to take the kill to them, so to be fair. And, well, they get something for their trouble, but they're 7k now behind, so Lonely Rock and Roll might have to go back to the drawing board, keep that farm going onto Big Can. Even though Big Can himself has hit a nice timing with the Eye of Scardi, it seems like he's going to go to the butterfly before he really starts to get involved with his side. 
Yeah, the butterfly again. The missed chances for the Slark are so annoying to deal with. You can go for MKB or a full Blood Torn. Either one helps your class massively. But the Blood Torn is going to be hard to answer on a butterfly, especially with the Manta up. Still chasing aggressive though, Piggy Killer. No one around though. Just trying to, to find something to do here. Piggy Killer understanding how powerful they are right now. Fly Fly, he's going to head up north. Big Can, hiding in the tree line, not showing himself, and luckily he doesn't. If, oh, oh, what a pounce! Oh, Fly Fly, Fly I mean, dying. he might die. He'll pop the Shadow Dance. He's going to be all right for now. They chase down Big Can. Solar Guardian going to help out. Sunder is there. Big Can looking to fight oh, back. We'll frisk. go back after Frisk. And we'll have the tiny <laughs> fly. He's going to show up again. He's going to be all right. What a pounce it was. Completely blind, just kind of hitting the nail on the head. Yeah, maybe a bit of a bait. <laughs> he baited Friskin to die, trying to back him off. Just not enough output on the TV. And that's where things are awkward, right? Like TV is big. He's got the eye of Scotty. When he hits back, the Slark doesn't feel that safe in the middle of these engagements. Oh. And it just boils into an awkward fight. Maybe a support pickoff could be good. Yeah, poor old Wen Hao. Gonna have to donate some more Agi here to Fly Fly. As well, Fly Fly, he saw himself another support, so we'll go for the chase. Pounces a little bit off the mark. Bochi, he's gonna just run towards the west of the map. But Fly Fly, can we get another blind pounce for you, sir? Yeah, oh, oh. Not going to find Bocci. He's going to see a courier, but not going to be able to snipe that. However, Big Can. Oh, he's hiding. Fly Fly does spot him. Needs the pounce angle, though, and no, he can't get it. Oh, not a. <laughs> if he got that again, man. Onto Big Can. He would have such a strange. It's such a strange magnet to be a magnet for, of all things, pounce. Arrow magnet, sure. Hook magnets, no problem. That happens all the time. But pounce magnets in the dark. Just not Yikes. something you ever hear of too often. Certainly isn't, Jonathan. As we are going to have another pause, which is something that happens very often in this game, number one. Uh, we'll see what the issues are now from, from the side of LRNR. &R. They've had a couple here. 11 to 16, though, is the game state. 8k net worth advantage here for Piggy Killer. I mean, you've still got this huge TP. Uh, TB is what I was meant to say. Like, Big Can is absolutely massive in terms of net worth. Now, once the butterfly is up, sure, you're going to have a lot more issues trying to deal with in this game, but I, I just don't know if it's enough. Like, you made the point in the draft phase that it is a the current meta is really revolving around 5v5s, and that's what it feels like. Like, as a team, I, I feel like he, he just can't do it on his own. He needs the help, and I'm starting to doubt that you have enough. Yeah, it's it's a little bit rough, I think. You do have enough support to enable your Terra Blade, but it's really the Terra Blade against the world with four heroes to kind of heal him up, get some control for the Terra Blade, not necessarily do damage. You have this one knockout spell in the Reaper's Sight, and that's it. Whereas you compare that to Piggy Killer right now, I mean, they've got the Ward's Health Lockdown, you've still got decent output on XM, and he is building into the Ags to have more mobility to dance around these fights, which you don't have the hardest lockdown on LR and R. And one foil to the Reaper Sight Burst play is really just a Glimmer Cave. It ruins Necroforce by a huge amount. Like, it just doesn't feel good when you sight someone at, like, say, 40 HP and a Glimmer Cave comes on, and guess what? They don't die. Yeah. Your spell's on cooldown. It's 110 seconds, all levels. Necroforce is such a weird hero, dude. Like, Jong tries to explain to me the in and outs of Necroforce, and I'm always like, you know, we always talk about the shortcomings of it sometimes, and it's like, yeah. This hero is not a hero that enjoys not snowballing. No, it's like it's so momentum based. And you've had a pretty good game here for these stones, but it's around this time, 27 minutes to 30, 35 minutes, where the Necroist can feel like it drops off quite hard. I think if it's funny, if I feel like if Necroist had something like the something similar to like Leshrac Ags, like Nihilism. Something that just acts as a weird sort of util and maybe spell amp. 
it Necroforce might have like a much more diverse buildup, but every time it's locked into like Guardian Greaves, sometimes a Kai Assange, the Radiance if you're ahead, and then a pipe, and you're just kind of the aura builder from that point onward, which as a mid hero is not ideal because you really don't have a playmaker right now in LR and R because you went for Necroforce mid. Whereas in comparison, you've got the Tiny Four for Piggy Killer, you've got XM who's been running around like a madman. Like all of these heroes on the side of Piggy Killer can make plays. Except for maybe the inch. But that is an enchantress. Yeah. Oh, picky killer. Still 10k advantage their way. Obviously, looking for a fight right now if they can afford to take one. Big can. Again, still highest net worth on the board, but not by much. In fact, it does get overtaken now by XM on the Ember. Ags now up on XM. Blink now available on Ava. So even more initiation from the Beastmaster, even more mobility for the Ember. And the Ag's timing also always feels very, very detrimental if you are on the other side. This is such a powerful Aghanim Scepter here on the Ember Spirit. This next fight could be a, a very messy affair if you are learning to rock and roll. It seems like they might get started at the top lane. There is going to be a big smoke up. Three-man smoke here from Lonely Rock and Roll. Big Can might try to bait for his team, and he is trying. Top lane farming all by himself, but his team's left him. Luckily, he won't get picked off. They did back off for a moment and start running the other way, which was very risky now. Well, now the bait might pay off. Frisk is going to jump in. There's going to be a Solar Guardian right on top of the Slark set. In fact, they've got him. Ooh. Fly Fly is gone. He gets caught with his pants down. Is now a Reaper Scythe. Going to kill off Frisk. Outside trying to run, but the, the the ice path will lock him down. And now Roshan's available. That is really awkward for Piggy Killer just running up with Fly Fly. Not respecting that maybe the enemy team is hanging right behind the Terra Blade. And the chain stuns were just perfect. They lock him in, he's not able to do anything, he gets pinned down in the macro pyre, and he just melts. They've got the outfit to deal with Rosh as well, with the Metamorphosis, Metamorphosis still running. The Deso minus armor coming in from Y Y Y Y Y. So oh, Ava. it's going to be a big one. They are the big. XM they jumps in, Ava's no. on the deck, but Deso's picks it up. XM though still trying to fight on his own. The shards on the deck in the meantime. Sunder is out, but look at XM just tearing them apart. Holy! bungie has gone. They can't keep up with the remnants. They've lost the Aegis as well. Y is still trying, but a oh, great God. juke out of the Starbreaker. XM. I mean, he made a mistake earlier, but man, does he correct it? Three heroes oh. going down if you include the Aegis. What a play from the Ember. That is insane. I mean, if he actually forced the issue onto Big Can, like Big Can just used Sunder to try and save. He could have possibly found a terrible aid kill, and they clean up so nicely. Like, that, that is the one thing that makes Ember so scary in this game. Jump in. They've got the Necrophos now, d -stones. he just had an Aegis on him and suddenly his real life is in danger. They will not be able to take him out quite yet. But they are certainly looking to assert their dominance here on Piggy Killer as they are not leaving the mid lane. Still looking to go in for more. Just hanging around, making sure that they can't leave the base here, Lonely Rock and Roll. They are going to try, but they'll have a now. It's, a, it's a little bit too risky. Yeah, it's way too much risk. I mean, you just lost Aegis. That's not a great feeling for LR and R at all. They are still getting this timing on Big Can. Now the full butterflies up. So you do have ways of just staying alive longer in that fight. The Terrorblade, it does feel like they need to kill everyone else and then focus on TB, which is easier said than done considering the output of Big Can right now. It's not a hero you can ignore. You are, I believe you have the full Blood Torn flying out here on your Sark. No, he actually doesn't. He just flies out the Basher. So no sort of Blood Torn to deal with the evasion on hand just yet. He does have some control, but <sighs> the Butterfly Evasion plus Radiance is going to cause a lot of issues for the Slark. And that is something that will feel a little bit more painful here for the side of Piggy Killer. No mid lane, still a group up here. Piggy Killer looking to jump in, outside, gonna show up here, just pokes at D-Stones, and that's actually a lot of damage just with the one impetus shot. Does have the Enchanted Quiver, so 
be a little bit worried of that if you are against outsiders. Frisk going to jump in, looks for a toss back, does get one. On to Wen Hao. Reaper Scythe already committed on Frisk. He barely survived through it, though he will finally go down. But the rest of the team are kind of falling apart here for Lonely Rock and Roll. They will lose Bocci. Big Can is actually going to find Ava. The Beastmaster down. In fact, now outside the one in danger as he'll try to run. Fly Fly in the meantime, he picks off Wen Hao, but he's in the middle of nowhere. He'll need to pounce out as outside does finally drop to the Terra Blade damage. And that is still the one saving grace, it seems. The Big Can can still carry this game for them. It's going to take a lot. But with the Butterfly now up, he is incredibly hard to deal with. Now you don't have a straight an straightforward solution from inside of Piggy Killer. And Piggy Killer, they utilize their mobility really well, but they dive into the tier three. No one can follow through. The rest of their team was left behind to be eaten up by that terrible of Big Can. Like Ava just melted, could not stand his ground, popped his BKB, just died in the middle. You really need a way of dealing with that terrible. The Hex is one good solution coming out here from Ava. And once that's up, you can maybe hope for the burst window to be long enough that you jump onto the Terrorblade and kill him off. You do see Flyfly going back for that Blood Torn now. So that should fix some of the issues you have with missing your shots. And again, if you can just chain stun the TV, like get the Hex and then Blood Torn on, roar right after, and prevent him from using M his Manta style up, then you have that window to kill him. But Piggy Killer has to stay disciplined in these, in these fights. They can't afford to be jumping a Jakiro so far away when the rest of their team can't follow up and just leaving this Terrorblade alone. And Big Can does clean up. You have to respect the output of the Terrorblade here, Mike. Yeah, you really do. Especially when the Metamorphs is available, like you, you really cannot underestimate how much damage this man can deal. Another smoke up here from, from Lonely Rock and Roll. They are just gonna roam towards the top side of the map, maybe. Seeing if they can pick up XM on the on the Ember. XM is sticking around. The rotation is kind of going the long way around here from, from Lonely Rock and Roll. And XM might just reveal himself now and does on the creep wave. Oh, Remnant back towards when how though they were waiting in the wake. Oh, XM gets caught. Reaper's sight. That's gonna be enough. Why to take the kill? And that was his unstoppable streak being taken. But they are forced to immediately rotate down bottom to try and defend. But they'll be fine to do so. The tower took hardly any damage. Yeah. It's not quite enough output coming true from Piggy Killer. And they find some good punishment on LR and R. That's what they have to do. You take out XM, you take out a lot of that punch that Piggy Killer has right now. Your Slark is big, but... It still doesn't match up to the Terrible Ape. It's all down to the Ember trying to be really disruptive in these engagements. So you have a moment now where there is breeding room. You can keep this farm game going. You're going to have the full Satanic for Big Can Pseudo rather than later. You do have the full Blood Torn up from Fly Fly in comparison. So you do negate a lot of the Evasion EHP you're getting out here. It massively softens up Big Can if you can't focus in, but it has to be down to really good chain stance. Oh, uh, nice, nice path. Fly, fly. He had the Dark Pack going, so he's going to be all right. Scary, scary moment there for Fly, fly. Had he not had the Dark Pack, that could have been a, a very quick kill onto the Slark. But suddenly, Piggy Killer backs against the, backs against the wall at the moment. Not feeling quite as confident as they once did. It's lonely rock and roll. Remaining as a unit. Like you have the side lanes being pushed out by some supports, but overall, they'll keep the rest together. Firefly gonna have a hunt around here on the Slark, see if he can find anyone in that Radiant Triangle, but it seems like he will not. In the meantime, now a Daedalus fully up on Big Cannon. They wanna try and surprise reveal this. Mind you, they did just commit their BKB TP away on Y, so he can Solar Guardian in, but this is going to be without his own BKB up. They're still going to try and force the fight, though. Never mind. Lonely Rock and Roll, they are going to back off. Yeah, they don't venture too far here on Lonely Rock and Roll, and that's Piggy Killer with a smoke out. If they find that angle, again, the chain stuns. 
they hammer it in onto that Terra Blade. That's where the fight starts to go southbound. Oh, inside bottom. of LR and R if they're not careful. They're pinging out. Why? They're avoiding the mid lane altogether. They want the Dawnbreaker. And Y is going to get caught. Frisk makes the jump in. A beautiful avalanche toss into a Bloodthorn. And Aurora is going to ensure the Dawnbreaker is dead. No buyback available. That's a big opening now for Pinky Killer to try and approach high ground. Question is, do they actually want to try for high ground or, they, or are they going to just wait for the next Roshan? Because it doesn't seem like they're really going to try and make that play happen. Nah, you can't force it. It's really dangerous to dip into that area. You're up against Shakira with lots of clear as well. It's not really a sustainable push onto the high ground. You need more kills. Oh, here we go again. They might have another one. Beastone, so he'll get tossed back into a site. The Vice, he's gone. When how now getting pounced on here by Flyfly, and he's also gone. In fact, XM, he's just jumping right in. Right in onto the Jikiro. That's Bocchi gone. And now the high ground's definitely possible. Yeah, just get they just get ripped apart. And again, th with this lineup on LR and R, it's all down to Big Can. He's the big threat. He's not even able to come in, use his metamorphosis, try to scare off the side of Piggy Killer. And the aggression from Piggy Killer to find these openings, to find oh, them spread up is massive. He could have planned on that time around, surrounded by illusions. He wasn't even trying for it. Well, committed by Bocci anyway, so you do get a bit of a bonus here by just forcing the buyback out from the Jakiro. But Piggy Killer, they've already finished with the mid racks. So it's just the buyback was literally just in case the tossback was there onto the TB. Because I don't believe Big Cat has quite enough of buyback, and that is the case. He does not have enough gold right now to buy back if he does go down. And well, top lane, they might need his assistance right now because Bocci's been caught out. He just pulled back into the game and he's oh, going back boy. to the graveyard immediately. Down for 70 seconds. That might allow another high ground attempt here from the side of Piggy Killer. I just don't see how you slow them down now. You don't. It's it's down to trying to punish them on the engage. And I think the ideal circumstance for LRNR is always to play as five. So that moment they split up, it was just that small opening Piggy Killer needed to abuse the fact that the Terrorblade's not there to be a threat. Without the Terrorblade, you can clean up almost everyone one by one. You're so massive on the side of Piggy Killer that you've got a lot of leeway to get that done. You've got the Hex up now in Ava as well. So additional control that we were talking about kicking into play. And that's where things get really scary for Big Can in the middle of these fights. Like if he is caught out, he is manageable now with his lineup here. Fly, fly. Bottom lane, got caught by a Starbreaker, but that was about it. He's still fine to back his way out of that. I mean, they take all the T2 towers, but it seems like they're just waiting for Roshan. It's only five seconds away from respawning, and they've got the units to scout it out pretty much immediately. So Roshan will spawn up now, and I'm sure they'll just go right ahead and just take that instead of trying to force high ground again. There's no reason to risk it. And this is kind of the storyline of this meta as well. Like, high ground is so challenging to, to force that you're almost forced to just go Roshan every time. Like, there's no real choice in the matter. Mind you, yeah. there is going to be a five-man smoke. Lonely Rock and Roll, naturally not going to want to allow this to go down for free. Chris, though, is going to be there to break the smoke. And I think it may just be too late anyway. Roshan is gone. And now they want the chase. Who do they find? A double chains out. They've got Y. They've got the TB. But XM, he's going after the support instead. He wants when how? And the Rubik already caught out. Healed up, but is still going to drop. He has no buyback available on the Rubik. Meanwhile, oh. Y going to jump in with his BKB. Cannot kill off outside. In the meantime, though, Flyfly's gone. He's lost the Aegis. Big Can just takes him out. But they've already lost Y on the Dawnbreaker. Now Flyfly can try to get to work. He does have to be somewhat cautious, though. He'll get caught by an Ice Farm. But nobody's aiming him down. The Slark is free to get right to work. And he will chase down the Necrophos. D-Stones is gone. They're on to Big Can now. He's also dead. GG is called. They have the buyback on Big Cam, but they just don't see a 2v5 working out. So game one will go the way of Piggy Killers, 42 minutes and 9 seconds.